So let's get started building our robot. All right, a few steps we're going to work through. First of all, we're going to install Ubuntu. I'll have to pull down the operating system and write it onto an SD card. Uh, then we're going to install ROS on top of Ubuntu. Uh, and then finally, we'll add a little bit of code uh, to help us work through the rest of this tutorial. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, pulling down uh, a copy of Ubuntu. Uh, you'll find the downloads uh, under IoT for Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4. Uh, right now, you'll see this is just showing Ubuntu 20.04. We actually want Ubuntu 18.04. Expect a link to show up here shortly, uh, but we need the 18.04 image, so I'm actually going to hop on over to the ARM Raspberry Pi wiki here. Um, there's a link here to the to the image we're looking for. So we'll start pulling down this image. This is the Ubuntu 18.04 server. Uh, you have a number of different choices. Uh, we're going to stick with the 18.04 server uh, because uh, the binaries are pre-compiled for 18.04. Uh, they're not generally available for the non-LTS releases. And also the ROS2 binaries are not yet available for um, uh, uh, for Ubuntu 20.04. Expect that in the near future, but for now we're just going to stick with 18.04. We could also go with the desktop image, but we really don't need desktop components running on the robot, so we're going to stick with this. All right, I actually have a uh, copy downloaded here uh, that I'm going to go ahead and start with here. So this is the pre-installed server. Now all I need to do is write that to an SD card. So I have an SD card available. I'm going to go ahead and insert that back into my laptop and then open up Disk Image Writer. There's a number of different ways that, that um, you can write the image, but just simply re -click, right clicking on an image.xz opens up the Image Writer. Really easy way to uh, write this out to disk. So we're going to write this to our SD card. Go ahead and hit the Start Restoring. Uh, we'll get prompted for uh, writes to do that, as expected. And then we'll go ahead and let this run. OK, so that image has been restored. Everything's written out to the card. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and eject the card now. Uh, and pull it out. Now I could just go ahead and insert this into the Raspberry Pi uh, but and, and then boot with a keyboard and video, but I want to try and do this without uh, actually having to connect anything to it and just get it running right on the robot. So I'm going to go ahead and insert it right back into uh, the device uh, and you see here um, it mounts a system boot and a writable partition. What I want to do is create a uh, network configuration so that it'll automatically come up on my wireless network. So let me go to the mounted directory. We see there's a system boot and the writable partitions. I'm going to go right into the writable partition. And this is what gets mounted as the boot partition on the device. And I'm going to go right into Etsy NetPlan and give it an initial network configuration. So you see there's nothing in there, so I'm going to go ahead and, and create uh, a file. I need sudo access since um, since this is currently mounted uh, just because of the way this is mounted. So I'm going to go ahead sudo and uh, create a network configuration file robot oops robot init.yaml yeah. let me add vi in there all right, it's set up an initial configuration file. There's a couple of options that we have. Um, we could set up an Ethernet, hard Ethernet connection. I'm actually not going to use that this time, don't need it. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this and just stick with the Wi-Fi configuration. All right, I'm actually going to change this slightly to my network. Wi 
168.1.22 is going to be the IP address uh, and the gateway is 10.168.1.1 uh, and that uh, name server address is the gateway as well 168.1.1 leave 8.8.8.8 in there um, and then uh, the name of my access point All right, and then I gotta put my password in and then I'll save this, uh, write it out to disk. Okay, okay so that's been written out to the card uh, and we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and eject this card now uh, and then insert it into the robot and boot the robot. Okay, so I pulled the SD card out of my laptop. I'm ready to go ahead and install it into the Raspberry Pi uh, based on where this is built. And we'll talk more about the build itself later. Uh, I had to work a bit to get this inserted up underneath here. There we go. All right. Uh, and then I have to power it up. So I'm just using, we'll talk more about the parts again in just a minute. Uh, but I'm just using a standard uh, cell phone charger in order to power this uh, robot. So I'll go ahead and get that connected uh, and plug that in. All right, now when it boots up, it should pick, pick up our wireless network, uh, be connected to the wireless network, and I'll be able to SSH into it and finish out the install from there. All right, so back to an SSH session. Okay, now that the robot started up, we can start to ping it and expect it to come online. Keep in mind, the first time the robot's starting, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to get through the initial boot sequence to set things up, to initialize SSH keys, and so on and so on. So now we see it's on the network. It should be uh, shortly ready to log on. We're gonna log on with the uh, Ubuntu user and the default initial password is Ubuntu and it's gonna force us to change that. As you can see, I've actually used this IP address before, so I'm going to go ahead and clear out an old entry in the host file. Okay, we know our first password is Ubuntu. It's going to ask us to change that. Type in the old password, type in the new password, type in the new password again. And then let's log in again using the new password. And we're good to go. Okay, as you can see, we're running Ubuntu 18.04 server. It's exactly what we wanted. Now it's time to go ahead and install ROS. Uh, installed installation of ROS um, uh, is following for ROS2 is following a documentation under the ROS index site. Um, you can see the installation instructions here are for ROS2 Eloquent, um, and we want to install uh, for uh, uh, the Debian packages. We don't want to build from source, uh, so we're going to go through and follow these instructions. First thing is to set up uh, the uh, ENUS locale. Uh, we'll wait for that to complete, uh, and then we're going to set up our sources. 
which is doing an APT update, of course, uh, and then installing curl and GNU PGP2 on uh, an LSB release, which are used uh, in order for our initial uh, installation. Wait for the update to complete here. Okay, and then go on to the next step to add uh, the key for ROS uh, and then uh, add the repository. Okay, so that's all set. And go ahead and update again. Then after that's done, I'm going to install ROS base. So that's uh, installing uh, ROS Eloquent ROS base. You see there's many, many packages. This is actually a, a meta package that contains a number of other ROS core components. I'll go ahead and let that install. Um, as you can see from the instructions here, you could install the ROS Eloquent desktop. Uh, that installs a lot of the GUI applications and the tools. I've actually installed that on my workstation. We'll be using that a little bit later. Uh, some of the tools are kind of nice to help you troubleshoot what's going on with your robot. Um, but for the robot itself, uh, we're just going to stick with what we need, which is just the base. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let that finish installing. Okay, looks like we made it. Looks like that was probably somewhere between five and 10 minutes, probably seven, seven, seven and seven and a half minutes or so to install that. Um, one thing that you'll see uh, we'll need to do across the board is this sourcing the environment. This actually adds all of the ROS components into the path. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and set that up. Source opt. Ros eloquent and then setup dot bash. All right, so again that loads up the environment uh, so that the pathing works well for Ros. Uh, and then we're just going to try this um, demo talker. Okay, and you see this is kicking off Ros two uh, to run a simple talker. Uh, this uh, no. Yep. There we go. Source Altraz Setup dot bash. All right. Okay, I can see ROS is installed. This demo talker actually was not installed with the base package. Apologize for that. That's why that command didn't work. Um, but we can see that ROS is uh, actually working here. Um, and uh, we can do things like ROS to um, topic list. And this will look for any ROS topics that it sees on the network. Um, and as long as this one completes, we'll see that we actually have, you know, a running ROS instance working. Okay, so we're good to go here. Uh, last thing we want to do is pull down a little bit of code from, uh, from my repository to help out with these examples. So I'm going to make a workspace for this. And then I'm going to go ahead and clone my repository on this. Um, 
this is a repository I'm going to be using here. Um, it has a lot of sample code for different robots and so on. Uh, we're actually using the uh, um, this robot here, Pool City. Um, it's our wheelie robot there. Uh, so we're going to be pulling down this code. Uh, we're working with that. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, clone this repository here. Okay, so we're good here and we've got all the code that we need to continue working through the rest of this. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take a look at how the robot itself is put together. Uh, and do that, I'm going to switch over to the robot camera. Okay, so this is where you get to have a lot of fun, and that's in the part of actually building out the robot. Okay, so uh, you can see I still have mine running here. Uh, you can tell by the power supply power light on the Raspberry Pi. So let's take a look at the components here. I'm going to try not to let this uh, power go. I'm going to try and leave it on. All right, so the first thing is the Raspberry Pi board itself. Okay, actually come to think of it, let me go ahead and turn this off. All right, uh, now I can turn it off by just pulling the cord, but instead, uh, since I'm still SSH'd into it, I'm going to halt it from the SSH session. Okay, so I halted it. That way uh, it doesn't uh, uh, potentially corrupt the SD card as it shuts down. All right, so I'm going to pull battery off of there so that we can actually uh, pull some pieces apart here. All right, so again, you saw the SD card here. Um, and this is one thing to keep in mind as you're putting your robot together is where you want to have that located. Assuming that you're going to be uh, adding, installing, you know, swapping out SD cards uh, over time, be careful that you can still actually easily access that. That actually makes the Pi kind of challenging when you're working with your robot uh, because you also need to have your power supply available over here. Uh, this is your video output. You'll be using that anytime that uh, you want to troubleshoot what's going on on your robot. So you can actually create a session there. Like for instance, if it won't connect to the network, that's how you'd want to deal with that. All right, there's audio. If you plan to actually use your robot to make sounds, uh, you'll want to use that. Uh, and then, of course, the USB connections in the back, uh, Ethernet. Since this is a mobile robot, don't plan on using Ethernet port, but it's there just in case you do need it. Um, and uh, so that's the board, keeping in mind, again, how to access things on the board. Uh, this kit comes with this motor controller board that sits on top of the Pi. So this is your general purpose uh, uh, IO bus here. Now be careful with this. Uh, understand that this is, you know, direct connection to the pins uh, on the computer itself. So it's very easy to make a mistake to connect something wrong. Uh, and and if you do that, there's no buffer, and it becomes very easy in some cases to uh, just burn out your board. Uh, by connecting the wrong voltage to the wrong pin. Uh, so again, be very careful working with that. Uh, there's also additional connectors. We're not going to be using those. Uh, let's take a look at this motor controller board. All right, so you see on this side uh, where uh, we have power goes in and that comes directly from the battery here. Now this is a separate battery pack. Uh, again, for this build that came with the kit, it's a separate battery pack that provides power to this motor controller board. Reason being, these motors, uh, you can imagine they generate noise and, and so on, uh, and so your power isn't going to be very stable driving a DC motor. Uh, so instead, we have a separate power supply that's used for driving the Pi 
That is sep kept separate from the power supply that's used for the motor. Uh, optionally, you can have a power supply board that will filter out any of the spikes that you might get from running motors uh, and then power both at the same time. Uh, so that's your choice on how you want to design it. Uh, for our case, it's easiest just to use two power supplies. Uh, again, one for uh, driving the motors and then a separate one for driving the board. Okay, so the power comes in here, uh, and then essentially it comes out and goes to each of the wheels, as you can see. All right, this just connects right onto these motors here. These are standard DC motors, nothing special about them. Uh, if I just simply connected them directly to uh, the power supply on the batteries, they would turn uh, at full speed. Uh, However, by having this board on here, the board actually acts as a relay uh, and this power only gets sent to this motor when it's told to by this board. There's a small chip underneath here that actually acts as a bit of a relay um, that, will, that will then you know, connect these wires to these wires or and or connect these wires to these wires and that's all based on what comes in off of these signals from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, uh, so we'll connect that uh, according to the instructions. Again, we got to make sure that we get the pins right on there. Uh, and there we go. You can see how that lines up there. Okay. And there are other options if you want to build these from scratch. There's different types of motor controller boards available. All right, so, um, so now uh, you can also see in addition to uh, using the pins, uh, GPIO pins, there's also additional pins that are available, uh, power supply and so on. Um, and these ones connect down to the additional sensors that we have on our robot. All right, so these wires come under here. Uh, and then connect into this small breadboard over here. Uh, so I won't get into the design or how this is put together. This just simply follows the instructions that were provided with the device itself. Okay, so if you look up this device or if you get the kit, um, you'll see the, the instructions come with it on how to set that up. Okay. Um, so going back to the motors, another important thing about the motors, um, these are standard DC motors. Typically your, your DC hobby motor like this runs very fast. So this yellow thing right here is actually a gearbox uh, to move from a very fast speed down to a very slow speed. Let me see if I can pull this wheel off here. You can see it a little bit better. There's just simply a, an assembly of gears inside here to slow down this speed to the speed for the wheel. Okay, same thing on the opposite side for there. Okay, the next thing that we have is our distance sensor here. Uh, this distance sensor needs to be pointing forwards, obviously. Uh, and this, if you'll notice, there's a small T. Let me turn this around here. Okay, there's a T here and an R here. This is a transmit speaker that simply sends out um, sends out signals out of the speaker and then this is the receive speaker. So as an ultrasound speaker this sends out uh, sound, ultrasound signal uh, and then the signal will be received here. Okay and then I have uh, the pins that are actually connected to the board. I'm not sure if you can see how they're They're labeled, uh, but we'll talk more about how we set these up. So you can see I got to get my robot back together so I can get my dog under control in the office. All right, so we're done with our robot, building out the robot. Have a lot of fun putting yours together. Uh, make sure you can get access to the things that you need on the robot, uh, and then we're going to start programming it and making the, the motors move. Okay, so let's finish off this section by looking a little bit at a few different builds. Um, so here is uh, the base that you could use uh, that's available on the Thingverse. So someone actually created this design. Uh, so if you have a 3D printer, you can print this out. Uh, really nice snug uh, setup for uh, your CamJam robot. 
Uh, here's another example of one. This is how creative you can get if you want. This is using an older Raspberry Pi, uh, but you can see it's using essentially a Tupperware box, right? So you can store your stuff in your robot as you take it driving along with you. Finally, here's another really interesting one that has uh, additional components added on to it. Uh, so you see a camera over here and other sensors and so on and so on. So you can have as much fun as uh, you can think of uh, on working through creating robots. Uh, just keep in mind, uh, look for spare parts in your garage. Uh, you know, plexiglass is really nice to use for mounting plates, but you can use wood, you can use uh, uh, cardboard, you can use the box that it came in if you want. Um, really easy to get started on this um, and uh, also you should consider that you might want to rebuild it from time to time uh, so you do a real simple build the first time figure out how it works and then the second time just plan on rebuilding it. So have a lot of fun with this and plan on doing it again and again. All right so next step is we got to start programming this within Python.